So some scratch marks, streaks from the snow, these things are uh, fighting in the snow condition, uh, so they get quite dirty. Uh, worked out these guys over here, so this guy's kind of telling him what to do. But you can see all the values, I zoom in here, ex ex is extracted from the values that we set up in the very early stages of this painting. So instead of going, okay, how should I paint, what value do I use for these, you just color pick from within this little blob right here. This little blob actually has all the values I need, just like this little blob. So then I just pick those values and extract it out. All right, same with all the detailing here. So as you look close, it's all very, very messy, but the values around these areas are balanced. So if we zoom out, you can see here that it reads quite well. Uh, it looks like snow with a lot of reflective light. And snow, you know, since we're talking about reflective light, has a lot of bounce. Right, snow and ice bounce a lot of this light over, boom, boom, boom. So even though the light directly is coming from this way, it's gonna out the ambient is gonna hit all these areas here and bounce all of this into the vehicles. So that's why your shadow size is not actually extremely dark. It still has a little bit of blue tint inside them. So all the areas here, you know, here, all the areas here, all the backside, basically areas not facing the primary light, are receiving this nice bounce light. Okay, here I just add a little bit more atmosphere because I'm always checking the value. I always turn this layer on, on and off to see does it read? Because value is important. Without value, it's, you know, basically the human eye can't see things, right? Value is intensity of light. So who cares about the color? Check your value. If the value works well, then most likely a color will work well as well. And I'll show you guys some demonstration of how that works, right? Whereas value and color are, are completely separated. Uh, here's just some minor cleanups. You can see here, kind of clean up the, the ellipse up here. Clean up the gun a little bit there, added some railing for guys to hang on to. Right? So I love military stuff, so whenever I create these kind of things, I really try to make it somewhat make sense, even though it's entertainment based, you know, it doesn't exist. But we borrow from World War II, we borrow from current military things. We, there's things that human need to do when they use military vehicles, like hand railings, like little ports to see out of, right, or dirt scratches. These things bring a sense of reality to your designs. Uh, but since we're talking about painting, I won't really uh, focus on that too much. We'll do that in a different tutorial. Okay, next, uh, just a quick logo, signs. Uh, sometimes you could do this with Photoshop, just do a text and then kind of um, distort it into the image so it's nice and clean. But in this case, to save some time, I just handwritten the guy down here also has something. And this gives it a little, uh, again, add a low level of um, realism to it. I added some snow here to give it some movement. Uh, this is quite easy to do. Uh, let me do this on a new layer. So what we could do is just, uh, I'll do this in red so you guys can see it. It's very easy to just paint a bunch of stuff like this. Boom, 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 boom. All right, and then go into filter and uh, motion blur this guy. You can see here, and you just put it to the direction you want it to go. Adjust how much blur you want to do. Boom, right there, and then you have a uh, blurred snow here. Now I don't use filters at all in Photoshop. This blur is probably the only one I ever touch because it's quite useful for doing certain uh, effects, like um, even rotating. Uh, rotational blur. That one's quite good for airplane propellers and those kind of the things. Okay, a little snow. And the last thing I did here is just um, you know add your name, sign it. Uh, I want to mention here as well. See uh, the way I sign my name is very simple. Your name, you know what it is, class demo. The date here is uh, March uh, 2010 when I did this demo. Um, why is this important? This here is not to show off what you did it or you know make your name huge. It's to just archive. So one, you know when you did it. Um, what time you did it, what's this for, and also people on the team also know who did it. Because when you're working on a concept team, sometimes a lot of people draw the same because we're designers, right? We're not here with artistic styles and one guy used charcoal, another guy uses crayon or whatever. We're all kind of paint and draw very similar, especially to someone who doesn't work in the art department, like a producer. They might not know the, dif they might not know the difference between this painting and somebody else's painting. So when they want to critique it or they have notes for this image, how do they tell? Well, they come here, read, read the name. So you want to make this quite clear. See, so yeah, no, it's just nice handwriting, okay? The thing you generally want to avoid is signing your name, you know, you see this kind of stuff. Sometimes you are, it's like, come on, that's for your personal work, that's fine, not in a professional uh, setting, you know, because no one could understand what that is, you know, and also the, the size of a lot of these signatures are ginormous, you know, on an image, it's like, let the image here speak for itself, don't don't let the signature speak. So keep this stuff quite, quite small and just off the page, purely for information. Okay, so let's check our values one more time, see here, turn it off, and overall, not bad, you know, for a quick painting, it works quite well. Uh, the shape reads, the design reads, and 
this way it's, it's a lot easier to sell this to a client than uh, just showing this line drawing uh, here okay so it's just a quick way of getting uh, a line drawing into production so just before I uh, finish this tutorial let's just talk about quickly what what I meant by color and value see what I could do is I could put this on a color layer okay I start a new layer I put it on color and I'm just gonna take the paint bucket here and paint it some insane crazy nasty color here like this you see nothing happened but if I turn this off, you see the whole thing turn purple. But value-wise, if I turn this layer on and off, you see on and off, it doesn't affect the image at all. It's because value is controlled. The color layer is merely tinting the color to a different tone. See here, I'm going to make it red. doesn't do anything. I can even put a gradient in here in color. Like, let's do this. See, this has a crazy blue-red gradient. But you notice nothing happens on the image. It's because the value doesn't get changed. But if I turn this off, you can see we get some craziness here. But you know what this image still reads even though it's crazy you see because the value reads so that's the magic of doing everything in black and white in value or have this layer to check so you are constantly at least know that your image uh, works right even if you get into crazy color worlds like this and it's kind of fun to sometimes try these kind of things like a flip it you see this does not affect the image flipping it horizontal Right, we change it to you know adding some crazy color from this side and do some and you get this crazy psychedelic sixties feel in about a second here, right? Now they've got a crazy image back there, but turn it off, you see, it's crazy. But still reads. Right. So that's the kind of the importance of uh, doing things in value. That you, to make sure that your shapes are constantly popping. So let me delete that. Okay, so this kind of wraps up this tutorial. I'm trying to keep these nice and quick so we could get to a bunch of other ones. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys find this useful and I'll see you guys on the uh, next one. All right, see you guys later. Bye.